everyone. Welcome in. Welcome in. Just testing out the lighting. Okay, I think this is better. Hello. Hello, Boonam. Hello, Adriana. Welcome in, everyone. I have a really fun live stream uh, planned for you guys today. It's going to be my launch party for the new Quantum Queens Babes Club. Um, but before I get into that and talk a little bit more about that, I have such juicy content for you guys today and I want this to be interactive. So go ahead and share your thoughts and your experiences in the chat. And so we're talking dating, we're talking relationships, and we're talking about restoring that goddess energy that um, has been wounded over lifetimes. And so I have a lot of information to give you guys, a lot of juicy things to discuss. So let's just get right into it. Let me know where you're watching from live. How everyone's doing? How is your Thanksgiving if you live in the United States? All right, so the first thing I wanna begin by saying is that right off the bat, this is like the last point that I'm actually going to elaborate, but I'm going to begin with this point. And the first point is that men want to worship you. Men want to be in love. Just like us as women, we desire that um, deep ravishment from a man. We de desire that deep emotional intimacy. We desire um, to be in divine union. A man also desires that. He wants to be madly head over heels in love. He wants to pursue you. He wants to love you. He wants to cherish you and adore you. So those are all things that he wants. Um, one of the things that is so prominent now in the collective consciousness in the Western world, it definitely started in the Western world, but now it's infecting the Eastern world as well, is this belief system that we have to somehow convince men to be in long-term relationships, that we have to somehow drag them into it, kicking and screaming, and this couldn't be further from the truth. They want to be in that divine union with us, right? So we need to figure out, and we're, we're going to do that in today's live stream, where is that disconnect? And how does the energy of the divine feminine play out in actual real life? So one of the things that I noticed, hi JD, welcome in. Hi Des, hello. Is that either we've got like the feminine energy community that is helping you shape your habits and your outward presentation, which is great, or we've got the divine feminine community, which is all about the crystals and the tarot cards and dancing under the moonlight naked, right? And I love both of these communities, but where do they merge, right? You know, I can't, um, how do I take the divine energy moon cycle dancing in the moonlight energy and bring that on a date? Like, how does that actually look like alive in me as a modern day incarnation of the divine feminine. That's where my work bridges that gap. Because if you get that and you get that, but you don't know like how does that look and play out, this is going to be a life-changing live stream for you. Okay, so who's excited for this? Let me know in the chat. Give this video a like, please. That helps with the YouTube algorithm. And so We've already kind of touched on the last point and we're going to all of the other truths that I dropped today will help you really set that in, okay? So just like we've discussed here on the Universe Guru channel, there's different consciousness levels for women, right? And so we're here living out our different um, levels and learning the lessons so that we can ascend to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. That's our ascension process. Just like there's the basic babe and the self-aware Barbie and the million dollar babe and the high end divinity high priestess, there are different consciousness levels for men. So if there's different consciousness levels for men, there is no point getting all turned inside out and twisted and hung up on if you end up on a date or in a relationship with a man at a certain level of consciousness level. If that doesn't work for you, that's, you just close that possibility, you, you close that, you collapse it, and you ascend beyond it. The more time you spend worried about why can't you get this man to do this or that, it's, it's such a waste of your divine energy and it's completely unnecessary, completely unnecessary. Remember, matter doesn't change matter, right? Energy 
changes matter. So it's like whatever you change on the inside affects the outside. But we, you're trying to, just like this glass is made up of vibrating energy, right? It's, it's vibrating a certain way and that information, energy, the information that's in the energy is holding this glass to be a glass because I think that this is a glass and that's why it's behaving like a glass. If I try to twist and turn and try to change this glass into a plate, it's going to break. It's not going to work. So I have to go onto the energetic level where this glass was actually developed to change it into a plate. It's not going to, it's already a glass at this point. I can't change it from here. So this was representing the man in front of you trying to go at him and twist him and turn him. It's not going to work. He's going to put up a fight. Men don't want to be changed. We don't want to be changed. So you have to collapse that possibility, put that damn glass away and go back to the drawing field, which is within you. That's in your energetic, okay? That's your energetic work. Beautiful analogy, great. Hello from France, welcome in everyone. Much love from Chicago, hi, welcome, welcome. So, so far we talked about different consciousness levels, right? So, we, so what do you do? You up-level yourself out of the paradigm of wherever you are, whatever your reality is right now. So you take your attention off of it and that collapses, that possibility collapses. So number one truth, okay, let's, I, I numbered them this time, so I won't forget. You guys know how I, how I can be. <laughs> Hello from Vegas, welcome, welcome. So number one, if you've been following my work, you should already be able to guess this. Everyone, truth number one, Everyone has free will and no one likes their free will restricted in any way. Every single person has free will and no one likes it restricted. You don't like it when someone tries to take your free will away. I don't like it. Men don't like it. No one likes it. God, angels, spirit guides, higher level beings, ascended masters, notice that we all have to invite them in. You have to invite God in to be able to listen to God. You have to invite the angels in to be able to answer your questions or help you in situations. You need to invite your spirit guides to give you guidance. Why is this? Because law number one, like no one wants to infringe on your free will. That is just God given and you have it. So when a man says whatever he says, you know, oh, you know, I'm going to date for a year casually. I'm not sure if I want to get married. That's his free will. And you thank him for sharing his truth. You say, wow, that must have been really hard to share. I admire a man that stands in his truth. And there you are as the divine feminine in modern day life, honoring the number one law, upholding the number one law. So there is no like twisting and turning and getting upset about it. Just like if whatever your truth is, right? Like if I went on a date and I told a man that I don't feel, you know, I don't have sex on the first date or the 10 date or whatever, and he tried to convince me or push me, right? All of a sudden we've had, we'll have the feminist radar going off, right? Like I would be very upset. Well, we, the same thing goes for him. Like he is allowed to choose the way that he wants to show up in the dating world. And I just collapse, I thank him, I let him know, and then I cl collapse that possibility. So there are infinite probabilities in the planet, right? That is just one that's in front of you. And by not getting entangled with it in any weird way, you let it go. Okay, so script. Thank you for sharing your truth. That must have been really hard to share. I admire a man that knows what he wants. That's it. And when we say this, we give ourselves permission to also speak our truth, to say what is true for us, okay? Truth number two, no one owes you anything. No one owes you anything. You don't owe anyone anything. And therefore, everything, every exchange is a gift. Every smile exchange, every monetary exchange, every physical exchange, every conversation, every interaction is a gift. And you will receive it as such. 
So if you want your life to be full of presence and juiciness and yumminess and fun and aliveness and vibrancy and radiance, accept every interaction as a gift. Yes, even the man that's sitting in front of you and saying things like, I'm just casually dating. That's a gift. He saved you a lot of heartache and wasted time by speaking his truth. And I love men and women and children and plants and animals that stand in their truth. That is so authentic and real. And we need to begin by honoring that, okay? So no one owes you every, anything and therefore everything is a gift. Like imagine if you really live this out as the modern day divine feminine, like how yummy does life feel because everything becomes a gift. Like I'm just drowning in these beautiful gifts. The sunlight is a gift, right? The birds chirping is a gift. Birds don't owe me anything, yet I get to enjoy that in abundance every single day for free, for free, okay? Hello, welcome in everyone. Letting go of emotional expectation for others and being present in your own divine feminine energy. You are very right. I love that. That's, I love the way you put it. it. Sounds so delicious. Just reading that feels so delicious. Like imagine if you were standing in that truth every single day. The guy that opens the door for you, um, the, the little boy at the grocery store that smiles at you, like every single thing is a divine gift because no one owes you anything, okay? So that was number two. Number three, truth number three is, I am fully equipped, equipped, I'm fully equipped as the incarnation, modern day incarnation of the divine feminine to create any reality I desire. Because the truth is, I'm not actually creating anything. It is all already happening, right? We know this from quantum physics, that all reality is already in existence, all probabilities. By focusing on our attention, by focusing our attention on any one reality, we collapse all the other ones for us in that moment. So think of it, remember when we were little, this is, this is an old toy, but you remember that, I don't know what was called that toy where it, all the flaps were open and then you would close one flap and then all the other one would open, right? So it's, it's kind of the reverse of that. So imagine you have that toy and so when you open a probability, all the other ones collapse. Does anyone remember what toy I'm talking about? I don't know what the age group is here today, um, but maybe you guys will remember, right? So when you focus your attention on the men that don't want to get married and you want to get married, that's the probability that is open for you in your world and all the other ones are collapsed. I know I'm not the only one that had that toy. Happy you are back like you never left. Thank you, August. Welcome in. I'm always elated to catch you live. Me too. Yes, that finger paper game. Was that what it was? I'm thinking it was like, it was like red. Red with like yellow flaps. Was that it? So is this making sense, right? Like, so when you focus on any probability, it collapses all the other ones. So as the incarnation of the modern day divine, all you need to do is take your attention off of the one that you have accidentally opened up, if that's not the one you desire, and put your attention on a completely different probability. And that's the one that will open up for you. So it's like, think of it as like, you're in this maze, it's a game, and there's millions of doors, and you control the doors. So the door that you look at opens up, so if I look at door number 8 million, it opens up and all the other ones remain closed. Let's say I don't like what I'm looking at. I don't like what came out of door number 8 million. All I have to do is look at a different door and that one closes and the other one opens up. So what most of us are doing is that we've, we've opened up the wrong door, but we won't stop looking at it. We're like stuck looking at that door. And then we keep getting mad, like, I don't like this door. And like, let's say that you opened up this door. I, I'm, I have this weird thing with clowns. So let's say you open up the door and a clown comes out. And you're like, oh no, clown. But you keep looking at it and another clown comes out and then two clowns and then five clowns and then ten. And you're like, damn, there's just too many clowns. I hate clowns, I hate clowns, 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 clowns. But you're still looking at the damn door. If you forgot about the clowns and you looked in a different direction and you see Prince Charming coming out of this door, 
All you have to do is not notice the damn clown. Okay, so let me know. Yes, love that. What you resist persists. You allow the experience to be. You say, okay, that door is not for me, but someone else out there loves clowns and they're gonna want that. So I'm not fighting it. I'm not doing anything to it. I'm just focusing my attention or something else. So everything that I desire is within me to create my reality. And another analogy I like to give of that is that for those of you guys that are parents or maybe you have nieces and nephews that you just adore, right? When you send them off to school or to daycare or to summer camp, do you send them there empty handed? Or do you send them with a nice lunch or maybe some lunch money or, you know, a face mask these days or antibacterial and a snack or two? Do you send them equipped? right? So we are all God's children. You are the divine feminine child of God. Do you think that God would have sent you here empty handed? No, of course not. It makes no sense. Everything that you desire and you need and you want, you have been equipped with that capability and that ability to invoke that. You have just forgot the language. You've forgotten your way a little bit on your transition here, but I promise you it's there. It's there. That's why we've got so many people talking about this stuff. There's such a big awakening now because people are re remembering because when one person remembers and we remind 10 others and they remind 10 others, the collective consciousness starts shifting. Okay. Everyone still with me? Welcome in new people. We're doing a launch party for my new Quantum uh, Babes Club. Um, and so we're doing a little party and we're talking about truths about the divine feminine in relationship in modern day life, okay? Number four, all possibilities exist in different realities. Which paradigm am I top, tapping into? So this is the same thing with the doors, right? If there is a billion doors available, right? You have the ability to be a billion different versions of you. And that just, that's a random number, probably more. Maybe my human puny brain can't even wrap my head around the number that it actually is. So you have the full potential to invoke any possibility. You know, even if we're just talking about the earthly realm, right? Depending on whether you were born in France or South Africa or China or Japan or the United States or Mexico, you speak a different language, which means that all of the languages that are available on the human plane have been programmed into you. You had the ability to learn any one of them when you were born, right? Same thing with culture. You could have taken on any cultural belief you would have taken on any diet you would you have all of that available to you you're being born into a certain region culture country religion impacted the choice that was made for you but now as a fully capable free willed human being and as an adult you have the ability to choose a different version right just like you have a free will to learn a new language try different foods, travel to different cultures, um, remove things from your belief systems that no longer served you, even if they were a part of your cultural upbringing. You have that free will. So all probabilities exist. And so how does it rearrange itself is not your problem, okay? Your problem is to remove your, not problem, but your, your decision is to focus your attention on the desired outcome that you want, the door that you want to open, okay? Uh, yes, like don't think about the pink elephant. Love that, yes. The way I like to think of it is that there are millions of you inside of yourself, like little seeds. They never disappear. They just stay dormant until you nourish one of one or the other. Oh my God, I love that, love that. Hi, Lulu, love that right? And this is actually so true. Like if you, we know now in science that what science used to think was like 80,000 
loads of like junk DNA is just inactive DNA, which means that we can awaken that through epigenetics, through our thoughts, through the uh, information that we feed into our body, through our food and our environment, we can awaken different genes and collapse other ones, right? So you are 110% correct in that, that we've got all of those seeds programmed in us and we just need to activate the ones that we desire and forget about the ones the other ones let them fall off let let that because our remember quantum physics says that our attention to something awakens that probability and collapses all others so we need to remove our attention from the one that we do not desire so number five number five is all energetic change reflects on the outside so in other words Success leaves clues. You've heard the saying. You've heard a lot of motivational speakers say, say this. Well, what does this mean? This means that if you're actually shifting things on the inside energetically, and when I say inside, it's actually inside and outside, but when you're shifting things on the energetic plane, your physical reality will reflect that change. This is how you know if you're actually doing it. If you're actually shifting, if you're actually changing, if you're not just lying to yourself, then your physical reality will show the clues. That's why you can look at anyone's physical outer reality and know what's going on inside. Because it can't like it, it doesn't lie. The physical material doesn't lie. You can see it. And so you, if you want something on the outside to change, you work on the inside realm. Okay, everyone still with me. Hi, Sylvia, welcome in. So before we discuss six, seven, and eight, I wanna quickly take a minute to introduce to you the Quantum Babes Club. So you guys know I had the Babes Club membership was what's, which was super powerful for, I think it ran for, Lulu remind me, was it two years, two and a half years? People were obsessed with it. There were like 70, 80 hours of trainings in there that we did live. And it just got to a point where it was too many trainings for the new people to come and catch up. So I ended up finishing that up and completing that and took, took a little break. And so I have been really um, being called to um, do like a part two of it. And so the part two of the Quantum Babes Club, um, part two of the Babes Club is called the Quantum Quantum Babes Club, and it's a monthly membership for really um, conscious women, awakened, really participating in the rising of the divine feminine. And we're going to bring quantum physics, energy work, energy medicine into the everyday realm so we can practice it here, right? As I like to say, information is great, but it doesn't really invoke any change so it's embodiment that invokes the change and so we're going to be meeting up monthly um, in sessions 90 minutes to two hours is usually how long they run um, it's going to be live and everything will be recorded and so you get assignments embodiments meditations if you want to do those and so it's just going to be a lot of fun it's really a lot of um, intense sisterhood we're going to go deeper this time a lot more energetic work um, a lot of embodiment work those of you guys that were in it you were obsessed with it so the link is um, in the description box it's called the quantum babes club and this is the pre-launch price so you want to lock it in once you lock in the price it won't change for you um so go ahead and check that out okay it's linked in the description box for those of you guys that are interested so now let's talk about point number truth number six Okay, truth number six is everything is made up of energy. Science has already proven that. This is not woo-woo stuff. This is science. Everything is made up of energy and energy is easier to manipulate than matter. Okay, we talked about in the beginning the example with the glass. Once it's already made into a glass and I've decided that this is a glass, it's going to be pretty hard for me to convince this glass to turn into a plate. But when I'm in the energetic realm, when it hasn't been turned into a glass yet, I can easily turn it into a glass from the material, from the information. Point a truth number seven is that all energy is moving information. All energy is moving information. And emotions are energy in motion. So what these two th things say is that Anything that's stuck now is a cause for di disease, now is a cause for illness, now that is what's invoking 
your your heartache, your back pain, your shoulder pain, the autoimmune disease and all of that stuff, right? So any disease that manifests as a physical reality at one point started in the energetic realm and something somewhere got stuck. You can look at it as far as water too. When the water is flowing freely in oceans and rivers and valleys and you know all like wherever it's flowing it's clean when water is stagnant when it's stuck it breeds mosquitoes and and dirt and bacteria and all that stuff right so as long as energy is moving freely within you right you're it's everything's moving as it should be things are coming into your experience going out of your uh, experience you're letting go you're moving everything is free willed in your experience life is beautiful life is bliss right even when something comes in that was supposed to be a life lesson you let it come in and you let it go out it doesn't get stuck it doesn't like cramp up your energetic system okay so if you want to keep creating from your full potential, you have to let that energy keep moving. So this information that we're talking about, right? Energy is moving information. This information is instructions. This information is, this is the information that tells the relationship to be a certain way. This is the information that tells your food to behave a certain way. This is the information that tells your emotions to come and go or be stuck. So this information is important. The way that you breathe is information. The way that you speak is information. The way that you relate to life, to pain and suffering or bliss and joy, to the way that you wake up, the way that you sleep, eat, grief, you know, whatever, however you do, this is all information that is creating your reality. So let me see what you guys are saying. Yes, this is the truth. I used to have horrible period symptoms, nausea, cramps, and headaches. I was very stressed, and until recently, I let that go. My periods are now very peaceful and easy. I can completely relate to this. Congratulations. I had a very similar experience. I had, um, what is those, um, what are those called, um, where you form like these little knots or something in your, in your, uh, I'll, I'll think of it. I'll, I, like once it, you know, I've removed my attention off of it when I can't even think of the name, but you know, three different doctors suggested I would have to have surgery or I wouldn't be able to conceive children. And I just took my attention off of it, released it, let it go. It healed itself. And of, of course you guys know I have three kids. So yeah, it's, it's a, a lot of that needs to be dealt with on an energetic field. And actually, science recognizes that, right? Like when we have surgery, they're changing the information. When you take medicine, you're changing the information. When you quit certain um, foods from your experience, you're changing the information. You're, you're speaking a different language, you're sending a different signal. And so you're up, -level, up leveling your entire experience. Okay, so now let's talk about juicy truth number eight, which we kind of touched out, uh, touched on in the beginning. And let's talk about how that relates to dating and relationships in modern life. So the people that are watching right now, you guys married, single, in a relationship, like where is everyone? Just so I can get a gauge of where we should go. So truth number eight, I'm drinking hot water and apple cider vinegar, uh, by the way. Uh, my drink of choice today. So number eight is men want to worship you. This is the truth. Men want to worship you. And this has been my theory for the last five or six years. And I've had the pleasure of testing this out, not only in my life, but in the lives of thousands of my students. And let me tell you how this has played out. So my theory was, this is, this is where the theory came from. I was really confused when I would see men that I admired, let's say uncles or, you know, um, friends, family friends, really great men, amazing guys, treat their wives or their girlfriends or women a certain way. And it always puzzles me because let's say it's an uncle and he's treating me really nicely. And then 
He's overall a great guy, right? But he's like being a certain way with his wife. And it would just confuse me because I would also see him really loving on his wife and he's a really loving person. And so when I got married, this started playing out in my life, right? In my marriage where you guys know, most of you guys know my husband, right? We've done so many videos together. He's been at all of my intensives, amazing stand-up guy. And I experienced his energy as kind of like poking at me, as like triggering me. And so over the years, I started forming this theory that men want to worship us and they don't know this on a conscious level. They know it subconsciously on a gut level, on a soul level. They know that we are the divine feminine incarnate, right? They know that we are of God consciousness and they want to worship us. And to if we have forgotten, they will poke us. They will poke us until we wake up. So I tested this theory out. Friends, family, myself, and 100% of the time, the relationship dynamic completely changed. Then you guys know I launched my business. I started teaching people this. And this is what it is. I've talked about this in the Conscious Couples program for those of you guys that are in it. When you're dating, okay? Let me see how many of you said uh, getting a divorce. I'm single by choice because I'm still doing my inner work. Single. Okay, so we've got single and soon to be single. So let's talk about this. When you're dating men, if they're showing up a certain way and saying certain things like, well, I don't want to get married and I want to just have this casual thing. Or if you're married and your partner is a great guy, you have chosen great, but he does certain things that really just don't make sense. Assume, assume that every man that's coming into your, into your field has a message for you. And that message is, that I want you to awaken as a goddess because humanity needs you to stand up as a goddess and I want to worship you. And so when I tested this out in my own relationship, when my husband would poke me in certain, in certain discussions or in certain areas, I would use that information and completely like warrior goddess myself out in that area, like totally super woman it. Okay, so instead of being the victim the oh my god i can't believe he said this and i'm triggered and blah 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 like my old ways i would not say anything to him but internally awaken that thing within me become a goddess and the more i awakened the more he awakened the more i invoked this goddess energy the more this man started worshiping the ground that i walked on and he loved it here's the really weird thing that happened at some point in our inner journey, he said it. This was the most shocking thing to me. He said it. And he said it multiple times to me. Um, I, I, it was in the smallest ways and then we actually had a conversation. I'm gonna try to think of some examples. I have one of the worst memories. But When I would say to him, like, I, I remember he was leaving for somewhere and he came at the door. I was in my office when my office was upstairs. And I said, he said something like, I'm leaving. And I said, you forgot to give me a kiss. And he walked up and he said, it is my honor to give you a kiss. And I want you to demand it from your energy. You are the goddess. I worship you, right? Something along those lines. And I was, this was me. I got the kiss. He walked away and I just sat there for at least an hour just going, what the hell just ha happened? Like, did I accidentally tell him this work that I'm doing inside? How did he feel it? He's using the language that I use internally. And that was my confirmation, like one confirmation, two, three, four. And so I started noticing it in all of my students and couples as well. It's like when someone say, well, my husband's a great guy and he's really great to his mother and he's great to his sisters and he's great with the kids, but he does this to me and he says this to me and I say, okay, do this and this and this, but Mina, he's going to get mad, let him. And she would do this X, Y, Z. It was like completely would evoke, a, he, sometimes they would get angry, but the, the anger would be followed by chasing them around, right? 
So my theory is, again, I'll repeat this in a cohesive way now, I get sidetracked sometimes, is that every single man out there, especially the one that we're in a relationship with, he wants us to stand in our goddess energy. They want to worship us. They want to be madly in love with us. But they don't want to do it from this place of like you trying to convince him. It needs to be his idea. So it needs to be invoked from within you. So if he's not taking you out, you go out. You go out. You close that chapter. You close that probability of that he's the one that has to take you out right? If you're the one chasing him around and begging him to spend time with you, you close that chapter by filling up your calendar with amazing activities that you love to do. And not in the way of like, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to keep looking at that door to see, is he coming yet? Is he? No, because then that door is still open as we talked about. So the real way to do it is to remove your energy from that door and really do it, really do it. You will notice that the places where your man has been poking you, if you're in a relationship and if you're single, the, the men that are coming into your field, they are trying to awaken the goddess in you. Thank them energetically. It doesn't have to be physically. You don't have to say it. But men need us and want us to come into power. They really do in that divine power, not in the I'm going to control you, you're beneath me, but in that divine union type of power in this, we're creating this together, we're in this together. They want you to be on the pedestal. They want to worship you. And the man who comes in and that was his only point was to awaken you, like in the case of the woman getting a divorce, right? He was given a divine assignment. His job was to come into your life, poke you enough times, awaken the beast of a goddess in you, and then waltz out because that was, that was his only thing. And now that awakened goddess is rising, like she's here, right? Now she gets to meet, if she so desires, if she wants it, with her king, with her ultimate divine union. Not with the, with the middleman. His job was to come and poke the hell, out, the hell out of you so that you can wake up. And this has been such a huge revelation. I've had this theory for years. And I think it was a few years ago, Irfan and I finally had this discussion. And I remember the day we had it. We were making, you guys know I'm big on vision boards. I've been doing them for 15 years. There's mine for 2021. So a few years ago, Irfan and I, for the first time, I think this was like four years ago, we did our vision board together. So I have my, my, this is my life vision board. I have a gym vision board for my body. And then I have a joint vision board with my husband. And when we were doing the joint vision board, we were writing things collectively and he wrote down worship and he wrote down goddess. He wrote certain words and I was like, explain this to me like what does this mean to you and he said that he wants to be in a relationship where there's a lot of worship and i'm like "Ooh, that sounds good right up my alley like what does that mean to you and he kept like dancing around it and he couldn't explain it and i'm like well okay i'm getting it energetically but i'm not getting what it means to you on this plane so i was like can you give me three real life examples from your and mine marriage where you felt like we had this. And every single example he gave me, every single example was where I was sitting on the throne and he was literally worshiping me in some way, right? Like giving into my desires or um, providing something for me, um, you know, changing things around to make me the most important, like center of the universe, even if it was a really hard decision for him, where he had to like really pull through and problem solve and shift th things. Those were the three examples he gave in. And that really solidified it for me that everything before in our relationship that had happened, he was energetically poking me and he was basically trying to wake up the sleeping goddess. And think of it as like the little boy in first grade on the playground. What do little boys do on the playground when they like a girl? They don't go up to her and give her a rose necessarily. Some might, but what do a lot of boys do, right? They may go and hit her. They might push her. <laughs> they might take her um, favorite doll or something, right? That's what they're energetically trying to do. 
okay? So I had this, I'll just say family friend. Um, I don't want to give any clues because I know a lot of my family watches these videos, but I had a family friend and she's married to an amazing stand-up guy, super high value, great father, like, you know, we need anything, we can call him, like he's a super stand-up guy. But there's key factors in her relationship where even though he's a stand-up guy, he treats her pretty bad, okay? And so she would tell me all this stuff and I would see it playing out and I didn't get to spend a lot of time with this couple, so I wasn't sure what it was, but I clearly saw it. Then I had the opportunity to take a vacation, a three-day little mini getaway with this couple. So we're on this vacation and, you know, um, you know, we're out to lunch and I mentioned that I like this certain drink and he's like, you know, gets up and runs out to the, he goes first and asks the restaurant if they had the drink, they didn't have it. He finds out from one of the staff members that three grocery stores down, there's a little grocery store or something that has it. Without saying anything, before I could even stop him, he ran out of there and went and found the drink and brought it back. Irfan is stunned, you know, his wife is stunned, his kids are stunned. And she's like, see, he would never do that for me. And so I'm like, okay, shh, let's just watch, right? So I'm observing this couple. I see him and my, my husband having a conversation. It was cold and we were trying to decide what to do. We have all these kids with us and she's in the car with me. She sees him standing there. Irfan is standing there, she, he's standing there. She runs out of the car up to him and starts zipping up his jacket like he's a little kid. By the way, he's in his 50s. Starts zipping up his zipper. And I'm looking at his energy and his face and he's mortified and I'm mortified. And I'm already starting to see what's going on, right? And then I can't hear, but he looks at her and you can clearly see in his energy that he screams something at her and she ran back into the car. Okay, next thing. Uh, the next day, he mentions that he's running a cold. All of a sudden, she's like looking in her purse and giving him medicine and giving him the water. And he's like, no, I don't wanna take this. Like he's clearly annoyed, right? And then again, he says something a little mean to her. And there is the answer, right? He doesn't want her to behave like a little servant girl. He doesn't. He is her queen and he is clearly like embarrassing the hell out of him and herself and he is not liking it. So I wasn't in a position like she didn't want to hear it. So I didn't, I kind of gauge if she wanted to hear it or not. She wasn't ready to hear what my feedback was. So I let it go. Two years later, when I, they were visiting again, she asked me and I told her what it was. I said, if you want to hear it, here's what it is. So imagine it like this, just like when you are a queen, you are of the people, okay? When you are a goddess, you are of God, okay? You're not going to be catering to someone like that. You're, you're taking away his divinity when you're doing it and you're certainly taking away your divinity, right? There is a place and a time to be warm and loving and soft, not by treating him like a child, right? As a keeper of you, right? Like of the, the masculine, divine masculine is a, a protective providing energy. He's gonna get mad when he sees you not standing in your worship, when you're not standing in your queenhood and your goddesshood and he's gonna poke you until you wake up and that is a divine gift that is a divine gift so try this out for yourself i've met, talked about this in the conscious couples we're gonna definitely be talking about these topics and going deeper in the quantum babes which is my new monthly membership let me see what you guys are saying hello from india uh, masculinity will overpower femininity if it's not in divine balance and it's and it's true the other way around too femininity can also overpower masculinity it always needs to be in divine balance i agree and it's the exact right percentage if he is slightly overbearing it's because you're slightly too passive it's i love that love the way you explain it because it's like this balance game and it's a moment to moment dynamic so day one may be going great in day two you shift it it's off balance a little bit you have to shift it again okay but we never work on the matter field we work on the energetic field so we don't try to change him we shift the energy dynamic within love that 
Um, Abby said, Bina, I just discovered human design this week. I'm a mental projector, which is how I found your YouTube channel. I have been doing this divine feminine work for two years now and human design has confirmed so much. I love your channel. So excited to bl and blessed to hear. Thanks for your wisdom. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you here, Abby. Um, my awakening moment, my universe wants to wake, the universe wants to wake you up. If you don't wake up, it will just get louder. How much pain will it take? I love that. Lulu, this is a big one. This is a big one for you. Yes, I'm, I'm just, I just like need a moment of silence to let that sink in because I know that's such a big one for you. <sighs> I'm celebrating with you, girl. That's it. It, it's just like a toddler, right? The toddler gets noisier if you're not listening. Mommy, 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 right? Yes, I'm listening. I hear you. Okay, now it feels heard. Okay, so who's poking you? Is the divine masculine poking you? It's a very penetrating energy. It can feel prickly sometimes, but they're just trying to wake us up. That's it. Um, so that sounds so pleasing. Worshiping is something I desire in a long-term relationship. Yes, right? It's like the entire universe is held by worship, right? We are worshiping God. God is worshiping us. It's a two-way circular thing. And so in a divine um union you are representing two parts of god right one of you is representing the divine masculine at times and the other part is representing the divine feminine and it might switch it's a dynamic it might be it's a moving dynamic changing dynamic right it's the definition of dynamic it's moving so it's you're playing this out without worship where's the juiciness right and so you you when you're in a relationship there's points that you're both worshiping you're both worshiping each other right and as a divine masculine partitioner he deeply wants you to stand in your power he wants you to have a voice he wants you to have your full divinity your full energy and so if he notices that there is a part of you that is not functioning well that's the point point he will poke so let me give you an example of this before i take the rest of your comments um let's say that you have a really great relationship where he's providing and um you know he's t his energy is coming towards you and he's helping with the kids and you guys have romance and everything's great but there's this one thing that you keep demanding from him whatever it is that one thing that's the one thing that he refuses to give you why why okay so what is it so i asked my husband this question and those of you guys that have done couples coaching with me, I've asked your husband this question too, right? Why? Why, if you are doing so much, you, right? You're obviously in love. You're doing so much. What is it about that thing? And my husband, this was his answer. He said, I will do that thing. I eventually always do the thing, which is true. Like eventually, whatever I want, I will get it. But not when I'm demanding it, right? Why? He's like, I need to know that there is space for me to give this thing. And the space comes when you're not demanding it. As a man, I need to know, this, this was my husband's exact words. As a man, I need to know that it was my idea. When it's my idea, when something's my idea, I can stand with it, behind it, over it, on it, 110%. When you're demanding it, it's not my idea. There's no space for me to give it. Okay, interesting, I said. So what can I do to not demand it? He said, have your desire. You're allowed to have as many desires as you want. Voice it clearly. I said, okay, I'm with you so far. Have my desires, voice my desire, okay? He said, if I have something to say about the desire, hear me out and don't shut me down. Okay, all right. Do I say anything if I disagree with what you're saying? He's like, nope, just hear me out. Okay, I said, what's the next step? He said, then let it go. He's like, you will get whatever you want, however unreasonable, however expensive. If I have to moon the he move the heavens and the earth, you will get it. But when you have heard me out, 
So this happened a few years ago. Recently, we were watching this show together and this thing played out in a couple. And it was like when it played out, we both looked at each other and I was like, and he's like, see, he's like, she's not letting him have the space to play it to, she's not hearing him out and she's not giving it the space. So I paused the show and I said, so tell me a little bit more about this. I said, if you're going to do it anyways, why do you need me to hear you out? He said that there is more in the giving if you know why it's difficult for me. So I said, give me an example. Okay, I always ask for examples. Always ask for examples, lady. You learn so much about your partner. So he said, for example, if you wanted to move cities and you said it, I know that I want to give you, he said, whatever you want, and I'm going to move the city. But I need you to know why this is difficult for me. If you don't give me a chance to explain myself and you shut down my thing, then you're denying my hero-ness, right? And so the best way to explain this, let me try to explain it to you guys. So let's say that you wanted, okay, you wanted him to propose. Okay, let's just use that in the example. Hopefully that's not a difficult one, okay. And you told him that you wanna get married. But every time he sits down and tells you why he can't do it at this exact same moment, you either get upset, you get triggered, or you get, um, you have your own opinions, you're, you butt him, but, but this, but that, but lest you start problem solving, he doesn't get to be a hero. But let's say that you tell him that you want to get married, and he wants to also get married, but he's got a long laundry list of reasons why he doesn't do it. And you sit down and you listen and he tells you point number one, point number two, point number three, point number four, point number five. And you say, wow, thank you for sharing that. That must have been difficult. I completely see now where you're coming from. That is hard. And then you do nothing. Okay. Now he knows your desire. You've heard him out. He knows that you know all the reasons why this is really difficult for him. Now, if he does it, he has the space and he gets to be the biggest hero on the planet because you know how challenging that is. So let him set up the roadblocks for himself and then let him cross it. So let's look at the second scenario. You say, baby, um, I want you to propose. And he goes, okay. And he shows up with the ring tomorrow. He's a hero, but he's a tiny hero. You asked him to do it and then he did it. Yay, right? But but do you see if he says, but you know, I don't have money for the ring or I'm still in finishing my school and he, let him set up the roadblocks and you say, you, oh wow, baby, that is, that's a lot, that's hard. Wow, thank you for sharing that. I can completely so see why you can't do it. I, I hear you. Now he will let him put this whole mountain together now when he crosses the mountain first of all it's his idea it's a complete surprise right like you weren't expecting it now and he had all these roadblocks that he overcame and now he gets to be the biggest hero in your eyes this is exactly how my husband explained it and it made so much sense to me it made so much sense because i finally understood why at the end of the day he does it anyways but he doesn't want that arguing that convincing energy that demanding energy from me in that moment so that is the shift that's the goddess energy that's the i hear you that is tough wow that sounds like that's really tough for you now he wants to do it now he wants to do it Okay. Thanks for all your work. You changed me. Oh, no, no. Oh, I love you so much, babe. Oh. Tell me the name of the show, Mina, please. I need to understand. So if you watch the show, you may not get this stuff if you're not on that wavelength. Like, remember, we pick it up, but the show is called um, Married at First Sight. We watched all 10 seasons together. It was so much fun. Um, but it was a lot of fun for us because we do this work together. And so we pick up things that the other people aren't necessarily noticing. Uh, you're right. My partner has inspired me to change myself. The more we fought, the more I started to improve myself for the better. And the more I saw positive 
changes in our relationship. Love that. You're welcome. Great. She runs after him obsessively, obsessively so he is repulsed when divine femininity is supposed to sit and receive. Beautiful. Love that. Yeah, so is this making sense? Like that's why I shared with you all of the, the laws, the truths, because when you start really understanding that it's not just this superficial behavior that we're supposed to be changing it's really this internal belief systems that you really stand by the free will right another thing that was really weirdly playing out in my relationship and i've spoken to a lot of you guys about it in my group coaching programs and one-on-one -on -one as well is my husband would do this really weird thing and it, it, you'll know it now when i tell you is that um i would say for example let's say i would say oh let's arrange the living room today he wouldn't say anything 20 minutes later he would say let's arrange the living room today. And I would be like, I just said that. <laughs> Did you not hear me? I just said that, right? And he wouldn't answer. It drove me absolutely bananas. It drove me crazy. I even asked a friend to notice it. She noticed it and she even said, Mina just said that. Nothing, crickets, not saying anything. Years later, okay, well, what happened was I let it go. I decided that at the end of the day, if we were going to rearrange the living room and after I did my inner work, I realized who cares if it was his idea or my idea, as long as I'm getting what I want, who cares? So I let it go. But years later, we were having a discussion and somehow it came up. Oh, I remember why it came up. It came up because one of my clients was actually going through the same thing with her husband. So I asked him, I said, babe, wh like, why do you do that? Do you realize that you're doing it? Like, it's super annoying. Like, when I say something, you ignore me. And then 20 minutes later, you say it as if it's your idea. What's going on? This is what he said. He said, uh, to answer your question, no, I don't notice that I'm doing it. He's like, I, I don't hear you. But he's like, if I was to try to answer this, here's what I think is happening. He said, when men are stand when something is our idea when we're standing behind it we all of a sudden have the internal resources the energy to do it when someone else has given us the idea or said it to us we may or may not want to do it so he's like i think what's going on even though i don't notice it i think what's going on is that when you say it i somehow block it out so that i could i want to do what you want me to do and then I repeat it and I own it and it's my idea. And then I get to be the hero that came up with the idea and did it. And I was like, okay, that makes sense to me. And who the hell care who's, whose idea it is? So I had already made that decision in my mind anyways. For, but from that point on, what was interesting is he started noticing it, right? Like um, when I would say something and he would not say anything. And 25 minutes later, he was like, let's do this. And then we would look at each other and he would laugh. <laughs> And I would say, great idea. I like the way you think, right? Like it, it became like an internal joke. So um, just to kind of explain to you that a lot of the stuff, like it's happening on an energetic level. And it's like when you remove the ego, when you're both wanting what you want anyway, when you're both getting what you want, who cares whose idea it is? You are one of my favorite channels. It's funny that all... The extremely complicated force femininity fades away when you get into goddess energy. It unfolds even better when you're not trying. Yes. And Des, thank you so much for, first and foremost for the compliment. And I love the way that you're able to take what I'm saying and put it in these, like you have these, this gift of words. And so I really, really um, admire that and I really value it because I think it's really helping my community hearing it kind of reflected back in that way. The thing with the goddess energy is to like not take life too seriously either. Like it's all, it's this big cosmic joke, right? That we, we need each other and we're so different and we complement each other and we fit in like a plug and, but it's kind of funny, right? It's kind of funny. And so the, the trick is to never lose that playfulness, never lose that like flirtiness. And even if it's like, and a fight even if you get into a disagreement like those can be really fun too because you come out of it learning more about each other um i've talked about this before but if if you get into an argument with a partner okay with with your with your man stop drop and roll not not actually but stop okay 
ground your energy center your energy my into the field meditation which i'm teaching tomorrow morning by the way the first live stream session for the quantum babes club is happening tomorrow morning so if you haven't signed up sign up the link to join the live stream is in the dashboard okay so into the field meditation is is that reset go into that listen intently to him let him scream let him yell let him say the things that he wants to say. Let him vent it out. You're in your divine feminine energy. You're like worthy of worship in that moment. You're listening to his thing. You're not defending your thing. You're not doing the thing. You're not rebuttling, none of that. What happens then, and again, I've tested this out in my own relationship and thousands of students at this point, is that he will get it all out in his stream and then it will be out and you actually don't have to change anything unless you want to. And then the thing is done. That's it. The energy has moved. That information was stuck. Remember energy is moving information. It was stuck. It moved out. Okay. You can pull us onto the room. You can clear it out with my healing threads of light that I'm going to be teaching tomorrow as well. Clean out the energy and something has shifted something's changed, it's done. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to bring anything, change anything. Something has already changed and shifted. What happens is when he's running the thing, when he's moving the information and you're trying to move the information and you're negating his information and blah, nothing's happening then and it's all getting triggered and there's too much ego. There's no divine energy movement. So one of you, right? And so we have since now what we do is like it never even gets to an argument. We both give each other ample space to move the energy. And we both understand that there's nothing that actually needs to even change, that that in itself is it. But 99.9% .9 of the time, whoever needs to change will figure it out from that and just do it. It's effortless. There's no ego. There's no defending. There's no convincing. There's no ugliness because the movement is it, of the energy is what was needed in the first place. It was stuck. So arguments are okay. It, they're, they're welcome. They're fun. Like have fun with it. Be sexy with it afterwards, right? Yes, when you shift your energy, it just releases and everything is released. Love that. Hil Hi, Hilda. Welcome. I haven't seen you in a while. Where have you been? I love it. Welcome in everyone. Default abundance. Hi, I haven't seen you in a minute. Do you recommend a place to get good quality Palo Santo? So I had posted Lulu the link in the Million Dollar Babes Facebook group, the old group. Um, I'll try to get it and I'll message it to you. Email me and I'll message it to you. What advice would you get for manifesting a relationship for a projector? Okay, so it would be the same advice for everyone else, but slightly different for the projector in the sense of the waiting for the invitation, becoming the invitation is important. Okay, so let's talk about this. If you are a projector, okay, or anyone, if you're a woman, remember that the projector energy is a very divine feminine energy, whether you're male or female. Play, juiciness, vibrancy. So this means restorative self-care you need to be oozing out glow from every pore how does that happen that happens from deep restorative self-care deep play okay enjoying yourself having fun engaging in pleasure when you are in that restorative self-care and two things need to be aligned for you your innate self-worthiness like you need to know that you are worthy i'm worthy i'm worthy i'm worthy without doubt i'm worthy i'm so worthy okay i'm so worthy to restorative self-care your mag your energy your aura becomes super magnetic and then the people that come into your field if they are your people they will make you an invitation this is why I say that becoming an invitation is more important than waiting for an invitation. Waiting for an invitation p places the ball in someone else's court. Becoming an invitation becomes creation energy. You are it. You, your aura is the invitation. So in order to get your aura in that juicy state of invitation, 
self-care, self-care, self-care. And I'm not talking about getting your nails done, okay? You can go get your nails done and be bitching and complaining the entire time and not be having a restorative self-care. We've all done it. That's not self-care. We know that, right? Or you can light a candle and sit in front of it in prayer and come out completely glowing and radiant from the inside out. Now we're talking, okay? Sleeping, napping, um, eating delicious, yummy foods that you enjoy eating, but there are also uplifting foods. They don't bog you down. They don't make your energy heavy. They don't make you too dense in the body, okay? So this lightness of being, this playfulness, connecting with that inner child of that, like, you know, that prince's energy of, like, not worrying about things, having faith, playing, um, not having to overthink the future too much, living in that present energy. Think about it when a little girl, you know, I have a six-year-old daughter. She doesn't worry about, you know, where all of her Christmas list of like how it's going to come. She knows Santa's just going to ring it, right? Like she just knows that some guy is going to come down the chimney and give her what she wants. So she makes her list without worries, without like, well, how is this going to happen? This is not going to fit down the chimney. She just does it. So that energy of like, I know, I know, I know, I believe, I believe, I believe and standing in that worthiness. So that is how you can manifest a dream relationship. So second part of that is the actual logistical part, right? Like I'm all about bringing things down to the 3D plane. The divine feminine lives here, hello on earth. So when you go out, whether you're getting a cup of coffee or dropping off your dry cleaning or getting some groceries, are you being an invitation? Are you having conversations with lots of different people, women, children, men, right? I'm um, asking for help. One thing that I like to do, and I do this with everyone, is if I'm pick, you know, at the grocery store and I'm picking something, I will ask someone's opinion. I'll say, would you get the red one or the blue one? You know, um, I think I'm thinking about getting the blueberry. What do you think? Right? Like having these juicy, delicious conversation and opening up your field and becoming that invitation. All right, when you have that energy for everyone, you don't get choked up in front of the right man. So we think that we're like saving everything, our femininity, our romance energy, our fairy tale energy for the right man. But if you have no nervous system programming for it, when the right man shows up, you're gonna choke. Just like if you were a professional athlete, you wouldn't like randomly show up at the marathon and run for the first time. You would be practicing every single day for like a year, right? So if you're not practicing playing with life right now, you're not gonna play with life when he shows up, okay? So instead of waiting for the fairy tale, become the fairy tale. Instead of waiting for the invitation, become the invitation. Instead of waiting for the romance, become the romance become the romance, okay? So you step into it, you are it now, whether you're by yourself or with someone else. This is why I don't think, I don't do things differently for my husband that I wouldn't do for myself, right? So when, even when, you know, if my husband's out of town, like when he used to travel for work, I would still get dressed every single day because that's not for him, that's for me, okay? I, I'm still gonna dress a certain way, walk, walk the way that I walk, do the self-care, for everyone else as I would for myself, right? It's the same. I'm not split energy that I can only show my best a certain way and then I'm different somewhere else, right? So you, your nervous system needs to be primed for that romance and then you're experiencing it all the time, okay? Love that playing with life all the time and become the romance. Hi, Mina. Is the manifesting generator that different from the projectors in terms of needs? So don't get too caught up with i okay so let me give a disclaimer the version of human design that i teach is my version it's the divine feminine human design the reason that i'm teaching a slightly different version is because of course as a projector we're all adding our twins our twist to it and i don't believe in limitations i don't i don't know any limitation all i know is god is abundant and god is unlimited and god doesn't run out so there is infinite potential for everything so anything that is limiting in human design, I have discarded it because I just don't believe in that. I believe in free will. So the divine feminine law of attraction, the divine feminine human design, it's very expansive and it's dynamic. It's constantly evolving. The only thing you need to know when you look at your chart that I want you to focus on is three things. Your type, with you're the manifesting generator, super powerful beings, by the way, and your strategy 
and your authority. Your authority is your new brain. That's all you need to know. So what is your authority? That's what you need to follow. That is your brain. Your brain has been officially replaced by your authority. Don't get caught up in all these other definitions and everything unless they resonate with you, but do not let anything limit your full potential. Okay? Do not let anything limit your full potential. This is wonderful advice. Thank you. Finally caught you live, babe. Usually end up watching the replays and so happy to see you live. Thank you. I'm happy you guys are here. And for those of you guys that are joining me live in the Quantum Babes first session tomorrow, it's happening live. It's so good. We're going to be talking about absolute versus limited realities and how to get yourself out of anything limited reality that you're stuck in, whether it's ancestral, whether it's cultural, anything that you may be infected with. We're gonna work through all of that in tomorrow's session. If you don't know what that is, the Quantum Babes Club is the new version of the old Babes Club that we ended, I think last year. It's starting tomorrow, still time to sign up. This is the lowest price that you can lock in. The price will go up in the next few days, so the link is in the description box. There's a lifetime option or a monthly option. Um, Let's see, what else did I miss? Finally caught you live, babe. Oh, okay, I think I read that. I've been resetting, shifting, and integrating. So happy to catch you live again. Hi, Mina, good to catch you live. Happy I'm so happy you guys are all here. All my old Gs and some new people as well. Welcome in. It's raining, so we're losing, we're losing light. Hopefully the lighting is still good. Thank you for your energy learning so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, wow, this is so powerful. Is there a small way to begin that to get today? Des, I'm so sorry. I missed at what point you had written that. So are you talking about which part are you talking about? I would love to dive into it, get all juicy with you guys. Um, what were you talking about? What part? Begin the romance part, the flirting with the universe part. There, there's to be the divine feminine, there is a certain life force energy aliveness. And it makes me so sad to hear that so many women have cut it off, right? I, I got so many nasty messages last year when I had written something. I said that the, uh, I had written a sign. I'm always receiving signs from the universe. I'm always asking for signs. Of course, I'm receiving signs. And I had put a sign up, a picture, and I had written something on Facebook like, you know, the universe is always flirting with me. So many angry women writing messages like, well, why, you know, I wouldn't call that flirting and this and that. Why not? What is wrong with the word flirting? It's so innately, deeply juicy. It's so innocent and so childlike. Children are naturally just very flirty. Like when you're at the grocery store at the mall, notice that little babies will start playing peekaboo with you, right? They're constantly flirting. They're flirting is like it's play. It's divine play. Flirtiness has no outcome attached to it. It's just fun for the sake of fun. So allow yourself this expanded experience of femininity, of, of your divinity, right? Like don't get so caught up in, you know, well, that's the, you know, that's the wrong word or who cares? Like have fun with words too. Have fun with it, right? I Mina, mean, just double checking. It's one video per month, not week in the new Quantum uh, Babes Club. Yes, babe. Okay. So thank you for asking, by the way. So it's, it's going to be one video a month and here's why. We're going to be doing a lot of um, really deep energy work. And remember that I don't believe in just information. I believe in really honing it in and embodiment. So when we're together, we're going to do a lot of, I also have like a huge toolbox of energetic sisterhood work. This stuff is fierce. I've shared the story with you guys. It's, it was super intimidating when I started this work because I had never, I had a lot of sisterhood wounds. And so just one session of this is going to completely erase any ickiness that you have with other women, with your mom, sisters. Like it's just so deeply restorative. I cannot like, oh, it's so good. It's like cellular level good. I've experienced it myself and it's forever changed me, forever changed me. So when we do this kind of stuff, you need time to like recoup from that, to like restore that, to like, 
okay and then i want to also give you guys assignments that you're going to be practicing and stuff so it's going to be so much fun um and also you're going to learn that scarcity is a huge part of abundance and scarcity is a huge part of the divine feminine i know a lot of you guys are probably going what i heard scarcity is so bad right abundance is good you cannot have abundance without scarcity just like you can't have divine feminine without the divine masculine like it needs that polarity so yes to answer your question it's going to be once a month it's going to be so good tomorrow's doesn't count as the first month session because it's a bonus kick up a uh, kick off party i want to get to know you guys see who's in there what you guys are bringing what your goals are i'm also going to be teaching of course in the first 20 25 minutes we're going to be doing a deeply restorative in the field meditation together it's going to be so good so for those of you guys that missed the babes club it's back i know i missed it and i'm super excited Oh, begin the romance and juiciness. Okay, okay, Des, I got you. I got you. Let's do it. So how do you become the romance and juiciness? First and foremost, let's start with simple things. Are you drinking enough water? So when I do sessions with people, coaching sessions, if they come in completely dehydrated, I can't read their energy. So energy requires... Um, and at least for me to be able to feel into people's energies, if I'm getting a complete blank from them, usually two, one of two things. One, they're completely dehydrated. Or secondly, for some reason, their guides, their spirit does not want them to be read. So it's either the free will thing or the water thing. So first and foremost, are you getting enough nourishment? And water is a great place to start. You know, are you getting enough greens? Are you really just like juicy? Okay, so set the intention by doing that. Simple thing, okay? So when you're drinking your water, are you infusing your water? Remember that in quantum physics, there's studies done on this, such good studies, oh my God, that water actually has a memory. Water has memory, it remembers, okay? It has a consciousness. So what are you infusing your, your water with, right? Uh, we have like a whole home flit uh, filtration system now to remove fluoride and all that other stuff. So then the water is as pure as it can be. And then I infuse it. So bless your water. You know, a simple way you can do that is you can just say, I'm inviting source. I'm inviting guy, God. I'm inviting Allah, whoever, whoever your higher source is, whatever name you use, invite the higher source to, bl to bless the water and just say, I love you. And then drink it, nourish your body. And then feel it, like feel it going in, like let yourself be juicy. Step number one. Another thing, give yourself permission to enjoy little things, okay? Lightheartedness, free spirit. So the child that's flirting with you at the grocery store that's peekabooing, go all in. Like make that child laugh like that child has never laughed before, okay? Give yourself permission to dance to someone else's song like if i'm ever in um like if when i'm driving and i'm at the light and someone else is playing loud music i will start dancing to their loud music like i'm giving myself permission to enjoy whatever is coming into my field um, if i make a mistake i own it and i laugh about it and i give myself that permission too so it's like you're engaging from things differently ask for signs okay so you you might say um divine spirit guys i want you to give me signs don't tell me what they're going to be i want you to start the flirting process and then notice how many times you notice 11 11 or 222 or rainbows or um like i have put the word wonderland on my vision board and the day after i did it i was listening to an audiobook and the word wonderland came up it's such an out of character word for that book and i'm like ah I, you're flirting with me like that needed to be there right so just looking and seeing all the signs where it's already happening that's how you become romance this is why you know if a woman that's fully lit up and nourished from the inside out like you will notice that every man will be tripping over her to open her door and it has nothing to do with outward beauty uh you know so to speak i've seen um you know 
a couple walking and the woman's energetically like this. Like you can, uh, you guys know, I can't even help it. I just read energy. She may not be speaking, but you can see her energy is constricted and she's energetically doing this. And he's, you can tell a, a very kind of open energy guy, but he's not, like he's afraid of her. He's not giving it. He'll open the door for a much older lady or a child or everyone else but her right probably because she's getting that like constricted she's not being romance now if you talk to her she's gonna say he doesn't bring me flowers he does there, there's nothing to do with that energy there's no penetration it would feel like rape for him to penetrate a closed off energy there's no invitation so when you become romance you become an invitation you're you're open okay and of course you can close it when you want to, right? So I have this term that I call brother-in-law energy. So let's say that I, my energy is open and I'm in, my, in, I'm in my, my flirty mood and I've got my nourishment going on. And let's say that I run into my brother-in-law. Well, I don't want to be all like open energy with my brother-in-law. I want to have an open heart. I don't want other centers necessarily open. And so there's this energetic kind of, uh, it's, it's this energetic shift where you just slightly have a shawl over you. Think of it as this like divine shawl and you can still talk to your brother-in-law and your heart is open. You can use this energy for any married man or anyone that's like, you're not romantically wanting to get involved with. You're still open. You've still got your sister, your friend energy, but it's not, it's not that energy. It's not an invitation so that you can do this safely in any environment and you know you're protected by a divine source so you're not inviting in things that do shouldn't be there okay so i hope that answers your question des it's raining i love rain how are you guys doing some of the best advice thank you oh thank you des and and the best part is that all of the stuff let me think Correct me if I'm wrong, but all of the stuff I said was free and it's easy, right? It doesn't, it doesn't require hard efforting or I don't have to get my hair changed or I don't have to like, you know, change my entire wardrobe. Now you may notice that when you're in this like light flirty energy, like for example, one of the things that I noticed when I really shifted my energy and really up leveled myself on a quantum level is that I no longer can wear things that are too restricting my energy. So I noticed that I just naturally reach for the dresses more than pants and I used to always wear pants. I would never wear dresses before, but when I put on pants, like there's just like, I'm like, I can't move the way I want to. Like my energy feels very constrictive. And so, um, you know, you, you may walk into my house and see pants on the living room floor because I'll often put them on and I can't wait to take them off. So you may notice that when you shift your energy, like, there's going to be things that naturally shift, but initially it's free. You may have to get more dresses is what I'm trying to say. You may want to. Okay. Hello, gorgeous. Hi. Thank you. So this is the Quantum Babes launch party. For those of you guys that are just joining me, Quantum Babes program starts tomorrow. Who's signing up? Some of you guys already have. So I like the crowd that we have right now because it's a good mix of my oldies that were in the old babes club as well as new people. And so I feel like, um, I don't know, it makes me feel good. It's like we've got some of that mother energy in there because we've got the people that have been doing the inner work for some time, but we also have some like princess energy. It's like the queen goddess energy and like the princess goddess child energy. And so we're just gonna hold each other in this really safe container. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Sorry, can I, did I say I'm excited about the Babes Club because I really, really missed it? <sighs> Hi, my nomad, welcome in. Love your dress, where did you buy it? Um, so, it's old. Okay, I haven't bought clothes, I think, in a long while recently. So everything I have is like, this is, thank you, by the way. This is from Nordstrom Rack. <laughs> I feel like a little girl kind of showing my dress. Oh, I was doing it behind this though, so I wasn't really showing it. Thank you, by the way. I love Nordstrom Rack because you can find like really pretty dresses. And I think this was, if I remember correctly, I think this was $13 and it's like, it just feels really great. Is there a way to balance queen and princess energy? So the first thing I would say, babe, is what does that mean to you? So 
I think some, for, to some people, princess energy is negative. I've ha I've heard you know different definitions of this. To me, um, princess energy is more of that childlike, that wonder, that innocent, that purity, where I have full surrender and faith in the divine. That's what the princess energy means to me. The queen energy is more of this integrated, mature, balanced. Um, you still have faith, but you also, instead of just faith, you have knowing in the divine, right? It's a slight difference. And I know I've been kind of butchered on YouTube for saying this before. Some people got really mad when I said this. I don't mean this in a negative way at all. I don't know why this would upset people, but the queen energy is also king energy. So the queen is also a king. And people got really mad saying, no, the queen is just a queen. The queen is not a king. When I say integrated, to me, in my humble opinion, being a queen of my household, for example, means that sometimes I need to be the king so my husband can have the queen energy, right? And so he also has feminine needs, right? Like he is a whole complete being in, in himself. So we choose in our relationship as whole beings, like when we're together, I let go of my king energy, my masculine energy, and I'm only holding the feminine and he lets go of his masculine, uh, feminine energy and is holding the masculine. But sometimes the reverse is needed. Sometimes he needs to move his emotions. He needs to be led. He needs to be guided. And I need to step in as the king. And he says that that's not, not only deeply nourishing, but really comforting to him. So I asked him why, and he said, first of all he wants to know that he's in a deep partnership and that he is like his emotions and his feelings are also equally respected and secondly he said that i want to know as a man that the legacy that i have built that you are capable of carrying that if god forbid something were to happen to me and that makes sense to me right he's built this family this legacy he's got these kids like he doesn't he wants to know that i can i own it too like i'm in it with him i've, I've got his back just as he's got my back so that would be my definition des but more importantly what what is your definition of those um queen to me is the controlled balanced feminine and princess is rich juiciness it seems like you and i have um similar definitions yeah so to take it a step further, I would say the difference between queen and goddess to me is queen is of the earth. It's when I'm planted in the 3D plane and goddess is my divinity. So the way I would look at it is, let me make sure I don't spill my drink, is if I was like an access, right? Like this is me connected to the super consciousness, to God consciousness, and this is me connected on, like rooted on this plane. So this is my queen and this is my goddess, if that makes sense to you. Your dress is beautiful, Mina. I'm going to look and see if I can find one likes yours. Thank you for sharing it. You're welcome, babe. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So who is joining us on the Babes Club? The the one of the things that I do and I love doing YouTube, you guys know I've been doing by the way, January will mark 10 years for YouTube. Woohoo! So we're gonna celebrate that too. 10 years. And I turn 40 in the next couple of days. I've got a lot of fun celebrations this um this this new era, I can say. Um so 40th birthday, next few days, and then um 10 year YouTube anniversary, Quantum Queen. I'm sorry, Quantum Babes, the reason I'm really excited about it is because there is, not that I censor myself here, but there is an openness to the platform of YouTube, right? Like, and I like that in some ways because new people are invited into our field and people can find us and if they resonate, they stay. But what I can do in the private intimate setting of the Quantum Babes Club, I can't do here because a lot of the juicy energy work, it's really open, right? Like it's, really intimate it's really private i can talk to you guys about things that i necessarily 
wouldn't want to put out here. And you guys, for those of you that were in the old babes clubs, you know that I share a lot of private stuff, a lot of juicy stuff. There's nothing you can't discuss with me. I am an open book and I think that we need more of this. This is how we used to pass down information from divine feminine to divine feminine to divine feminine. And it's lost now. And so I don't mind sharing, you know, personal things in the hopes of if that's going to be useful to you. So I can do that better in that quiet Zoom setting. And then, you know, it. so that's why I'm super excited because I was really kind of craving that. And I can sense from my community that you guys were craving that too. Thank you for explaining the thing called brother-in-law energy. Yes, I'm so glad. Yes, because we need that too, right? Like there is there's an appropriateness of energy, uh, energetics. Like you have your toolbox and you're not going to pull out a hammer if what you need is... A screwdriver right like you want to make sure that you can be kind of fluid in in your usage of these things what you literally look 25 honest to god hand on the book yeah you guys you're so sweet thank you so much thank you thank you you know i turn uh 40 i am super excited because i have waited my entire life to turn 40 and i don't know why when i was little i shared the story before I used to be able to see and speak to my spirit guys, like actually physically see them and speak to them when I was little. And um, it used to freak out my mom. I've shared the story with you guys. And so at one point I told my guides that they had to leave because they were scaring my mom. And before they left, which they are back connected with me now, not that they actually left, but they said, okay, we're going to leave and we'll be back when you call upon us. But we, what we want you to know is that life begins at 40. And so it was, I never understood what that meant. I was like five or six at the time. And all I know is that I've had this deep seated excitement for turning 40. And I don't know why, like, I'm just like, okay, give it to me. Like, what is it? <laughs> so, um, I have theories, like I know I've been through so much in my life and my theory is that all of that was somehow, that experience was supposed to um, alchemize me in a way where I would be more of service after 40. I don't know, just the theory, My uh, the next leg hasn't been revealed to me, but you have no idea how excited I am. <laughs> Super excited. Ten, 10 years, congrats. Thank you, Lulu, yay! I'm so excited to have you in there. Uh, I don't understand why you don't answer my question. I don't need a long explanation. Babe, um, I, I'm, not, I'm not seeing your question. If anyone else is seeing it, please repost it. Um, so one, one thing to point out, don't, like in life, and especially on YouTube, don't just assume that someone's not answering your question or ignoring you. Every once in a while in a live stream, I'll get this, you know, people getting upset I can't see it. So I don't know if YouTube blocks certain comments or I lost it in the other comments. But generally, if you follow the work that I teach, your general understanding, according to how I follow my life, is that life is friendly. People are friendly. The universe is friendly. No one's out to get me. No one's not answering my question on purpose. So I did not see it and I'm looking for it and I still don't see it. So I sincerely apologize. But if you want to repost it, I'm all ears. Sometimes I feel like my feminine energy is too bright and I attract unwanted attention. How do I deal with that? So Abby, what I would do is go into a deep meditation and see if there was any instances in your childhood or maybe even early adulthood. So all the way up to early 20s, I would say, where you were told that you were too much, too loud, um, too whatever. And if that's something that's still kind of stuck in your field. Is that something that's still kind of lodged in there? That's just like it's there's a door, remember how we talked about the doors in the beginning? There's a door that you're looking at without realizing that you're looking at it. And so we just need to close that door, collapse that possibility to open another one. So where is this coming from? Like, were you ever told by your mom, dad, brother, sister, teachers, you're too much, you're too loud, something about too much in that way that's kind of still lingering with you? Ooh, we've gone on for like an hour and a half. Oh my goodness. Okay, this felt like five minutes to you, to me. So ladies, 
thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to start the Babes Club tomorrow. It's called the Quantum Babes Club this time around. Um, the link is in the description box. I'll go ahead and um, drop it in the chat right now as well for those of you guys who are there. I would love to have you in there. A lot of juicy, um, deep energy work, a lot of great stuff. For those of you guys that have worked with me before, we're going next level. Here's the link. Yeah, I still don't see Chrissy's thing. I don't know if there were any words in there that YouTube thought shouldn't be. I have no idea. And please, if you would give this a thumbs up for those of you guys who are watching. Thank you so much. I also placed in the description box some other links to the Physics of Femininity Virtual Intensive that's happening. That's my New Year Intensive that I do every year. That's happening in January. And that I usually do that in person, but obviously because of this current circumstances, um, that one's happening in uh, virtually this year. So you can join that as well. I also put the links of the High Value Worthy Woman Toolkit, Sacred Feminine Spiritual Awakening, Modern Dating for Queens, My Dating Intensive, and 90 Day Relationship Rehab. Someone's asking a question. Is there a Facebook group? Um, wonderfully made. I'm not doing a Facebook group with the Babes Club this time around. I'm actually not doing Facebook um, at all these days. I'm just doing YouTube. But um, the site that I use to host my programs has a um, discussion board now. They didn't have that available before. So I'm going to try to do that so we can like discuss things and talk to each other that way. Hopefully if I can figure it out. So I'll keep you posted on that. Um, thank you so much. You're a real life angel who came here to help us have a wonderful 40th birthday. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you guys coming and think and hanging out with me and spending this time with me. So glad I found your work. Thank you, Abby. I'll see you guys tomorrow in the Quantum Queen. Bye.